this in a very long time. This happened to me when I was around 10 or 11. My dad had bought us a Scooby-Doo VHS tape of an episode that I can't fully recall. All I can remember was that it was about a little girl's ghost haunting a whole town. Our parents didn't go out very much since my brother suffers from asthma and they were very protective of him, but one night they had this important party thing to go to and decided to call a babysitter. I remember getting upset and telling them that I was old enough to take care of my brother, but of course, like parents, they didn't listen. They left us with this freckly 15-year-old neighbor girl called Amanda or something. Before leaving, Dad gave us the tape, which got us really excited, as it would be the first time Dad would let us use the VHS player. After they left, we all noticed that the tape was kind of weird. The art in the cover looked handmade somehow. Scooby looked really terrified and the ghost girl was really creepy. I remember Amanda calling my dad a weirdo for buying such a thing for us, but I just assumed he had picked up the first tape that he had saw. I also remember that Amanda didn't want to play the tape, but after my brother and I insisted for almost an hour, we finally sat in front of the TV to watch the thing. The episode itself was kind of boring, there were almost no jokes and it wasn't that scary. But I do remember being surprised that the ghost from the cover didn't look at all from the one in the video. I don't really remember the plot of the episode, I guess it was just pretty much the usual, and Amanda would repeat, stupid show, every five minutes. Close to the end, when they got the ghost and were about to unmask her, something weird happened. All of the Scooby-Doo gang stopped talking and looked at the camera with a really sad and serious look on their faces. They stared at us for a very long time in silence. Even the background music had stopped. The only person not looking at us was the ghost girl, but she suddenly lifted her head and stared at the camera with her terrible eyes wide open. The final credits came abruptly after that. We all stared at the TV without saying a word until the tape finally stopped. We were shocked. My brother looked at us and said something like, Holy shit, I can't believe Shaggy died. That's pretty fucked up. We looked at him. Confused, and Amanda asked what he was talking about. He insisted that it was stupid to kill a character and then bring him back to life for the next episode. She got really nervous and told him that Shaggy didn't die in that episode and that the ghost girl disappeared right after they caught her, and the episode finished with the whole gang scared to death. Nothing made any sense. I mean, I couldn't understand a single thing about what was going on. When I told him what I saw, Amanda freaked out. She said at least 10 times that it wasn't funny and she left her house pissed off and, I assume, scared to her bones like we were. After discussing for at least half an hour, we decided to put the tape in and watch it again. We turned on all the lights and we pushed rewind. The thing is, when we got to the part where they got the girl, the episode just suddenly ends. Nothing happens. They get the girl and there's no unmasking, no killing, and no staring. It just ends there. We stopped the tape and ran to our room. My brother wound up having an asthma attack later on that night and I just, I stayed at his bed crying and praying that he wouldn't die. Thankfully though, he wound up calming down enough and we both fell asleep. The next morning, my brother started acting like nothing had happened. After insisting for about two days, he told me he just didn't want to talk about it again. And that was it. <sighs> Damn. I think I actually have not really told anybody about this, but... I'm going to be quite fairing. It really does feel good to share it. Well, 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 after a while of shifting through the mountain of trash pasta stories, we actually managed to do it. We found a lost episode creepy pasta that wasn't absolute shit. And I got to admit, despite the story being rather short, this pasta was actually really well made from the start all the way down to the end. I mean, sure enough, the title might have come across as a bit generic, but I have to say that despite the, the concept of the story, this was a really nice and refreshing breath of air in terms of Lost Episode Creepypastas, which I will admit everybody 
is kind of saying something given how a grand majority of these pastas just come across as being absolutely nothing more but a steaming pile of shit. I can say, without any uncertainty, that I really liked how this protagonist in the story was played out. Not only do we manage to get a realistic betrayal of emotions and the like that aren't completely over-exaggerated to hell and back, but there was a really nice mix-in of other characters as well that added a little bit more perspective, specifically at the end, when it came to the actual viewing of the episode in question. What I liked the most about this protagonist was the fact that this character simply went out of their way to tell their story, and even took it a step forward to not going into a plethora of unnecessary details like for example, their name, how much they love a quote-unquote series, will never look at it the same way again, how they're terrified and scarred for life, you know, the basic kind of things that many protagonists usually tend to start off with. I mean, yeah, this protagonist actually managed to be a realistic character. Shocking enough, isn't it? That's actually really sad when you think about it. I mean, this story managed to actually have a realistic character in it. While 95% of other Lost episode shit pastas manage to sit there and have a character that basically is the equivalent of a five-year-old sitting there and having a temper tantrum over a god-awful Lost episode, but we'll get into that in due time. But getting back on topic, I will say that having a realistic character like this really adds more to the believability of the story, like it was an actual testimony of someone who was actually viewing this. And sure enough, the protagonist does actually go out of their way and make a mention that it had been a very long time since they've actually since they've actually managed to retell this story. So, and if anything, that actually kind of adds a lot more to the pasta itself, given how short it is, because, again, if you have a really difficult time remembering certain aspects and everything of a specific kind of event in your life, you're not always going to have an exceeding amount of detail to go with it. Which, in my honest viewpoint and everything, just kind of really adds a lot more, and it's a pretty damn good explanation for why exactly the story is relatively short. I mean, it's literally only four paragraphs long. But regardless though, the protagonist really manages to actually stand out a lot more and potentially be realistic, especially given the fact that, you know, they're like 10 or 11. So there is that. I will, I will say that. When I say that this pasta really is a breath of fresh air, I genuinely mean that. And so far, the episode that was described was a perfect example of short, sweet, and to the point. One thing that I actually liked the most about this episode was the lack of cliches within the episode itself. There is no mentioning of static, gore, blood, Satan, or even objects being shoved up of characters' asses. It was just a simple, creepy episode, and it was just that, a, a simple, creepy story. I mean, sure, we could probably add in the creepy expression at the end being a slight cliche, but anybody who's ever watched Scooby-Doo will know for a fact that it's had its fair share of relatively freaky moments that are either extremely unnerving or just downright disturbing at times. Which, of course, in my honest opinion, was, a rel was relatively excusable in this pasta, and it did kind of add a little bit of an extra interesting touch to it. Another aspect about this story, that, about this episode that I liked a lot, was the different interpretations that the other characters of the story gave at the end of the episode. With the babysitter mentioning the ghost girl disappearing, the little brother mentioning that Shaggy died in the episode, and the protagonist mentioning the creepy expression at the end given by the ghost girl. In my honest viewpoint, it adds a lot more to the story, because truth be told, we never actually get to see what real version of the end was actually like, especially around the end where the, char the, where the characters sit there and actually try and play the episode again, only to sit there and just have the episode more or less cut out and that's pretty much about it. Now I know that some people might, sit or, might actually consider that to be a cliche, but in my honest viewpoint, especially given the fact that this was done from a, well, <laughs> done from a like eight, nine year old kind of perspective and the like. Uh, I actually think that this does kind of fit in. I mean, perhaps maybe there is a little bit of an explanation for that, which I will fault the story slightly for not really giving much of an explanation, but if I really had to throw it in, uh, it's a nitpick personally for me, if I had to really throw it in, maybe that's just kind of, maybe their imagination started running wild, especially given the fact that the protagonist said that the episode was extremely boring, so it's likely that their minds just wind up coming up with a different scenario that actually didn't happen. This is something that does happen to people, but usually it comes across later on throughout, you know, throughout their lives, but for this story, I'm willing to give it that. 
and yeah, it was <laughs> it was pretty awesome to to be honest. You don't really get that with many pastas sitting there and having like different perspectives and everything coming from different people about a specific episode, with maybe the exception being Candle Cove specifically. But again, that's a di completely different story from this one. But yeah, honestly, I felt as though that little add-on, that little touch at the end after the episode ended was a really nice way to kind of end off the episode and shroud it in a little sense of mystery. Now, as for the pasta as a whole, I do have to say that this was a very well made, short, and played out rather beautifully. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. I have to say that it was very well made, short and sweet, and played out extremely beautifully. The flow of the story was definitely on point, the grammar and sentence structuring were very well done, and that's saying a lot, and the ending of the story, while I will admit was a tad bit flat, didn't ruin the story or include something stupid like breaking the VHS, demons coming out and killing people, or some other stupid shit like many other authors tend to sit there and throw in with their pastas. It all worked out and flowed nicely, and for that I have to say to the author that you did a good job. You really put in a lot of detail and effort within this pasta. Although I will admit, it's such a shame that it did get deleted off of the original Creepypasta wiki, because while I will admit that the story in and of its own right wasn't entirely creepy, I still think that it honestly deserved to stay within the original wiki site. Because again, while the story itself isn't exactly the most creepy thing imaginable, it does add a sense of unnerving of ner- it does add a sense of of feeling of unnerv of nervingness. God, I literally can't talk today, can I? Can I? It does add a little bit of an un unnerving feeling, and it kind of plays a little bit more with the whole mystery kind of deal. It's very, very minor and kind of faint, but I still thought it was great. Overall, this was a very good pasta and a very well executed Lost episode. Many authors could really take an example from this. Overall, my final thoughts on this pasta are as follows. The Lost Episode pasta, this Lost Episode pasta was a pure gem of a story, and I loved every ounce of it. While I will admit that there wasn't exactly anything creepy in and of its own right in the story, it still manages to hold down a relatively solid plot, episode description, and, well, characters in general. Which is a sad, which is sadly a, rea a rarity when it comes to Lost Episode creepypastas in general, but then again, I can't really say that's too much of a surprise. So if anything, let's sit there and just kind of savor and enjoy this pasta. Now, with that stated, I will say that the creep factor definitely could have been up a little bit more. I mean, sure enough, you do have the creepy expression of the girl at the end, but to be fair, I do think that that could have been expanded on just slightly, perhaps, but overall, nothing, nothing more else. So again, to the author of the story, you did a really good job to the, with the story, and I really hope you keep on writing more in the future. And for any of you out there who are who are wanting to sit there and write their own stories, use this story as a, a bit of an example, inspiration, or whatsoever that you can to sit there and make sure of it that your lost episode pastas don't go, go down the fucking drain like many other stories tend to do. So, again, I have to say that this this was great. And my, def my final rating of the story, I'm going to give this one a 9.5 out of 10. Now, the only particular reason why this isn't exactly a 10 out of 10 story solely was because of the fact that, well, there definitely could a little bit more of a, of a creepy factor to it. That's really the only thing I can really fault the story with. If it had been a, little, a tad bit creepier, maybe gone a little bit more detail with the episode, like in a summary per se, you know, this actually would have been a full 10 out of 10, but overall, it's a very well-made creepypasta story, and I genuinely liked it a lot. But like what I always say with these creepypastas, and like what I always will continue to say, this is simply my own personal opinion, and if you disagree with it, that's perfectly fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these creepypastas, and this is just simply my own personal thoughts. What did you guys think about this creepypasta? Did you guys enjoy it? Did you guys not? And also, what would you have done to help make the story a whole lot better? Thanks again for watching today's episode, you guys. I will be having a lot more. Uh, and if you're brand new here to this channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below because I make brand new videos every single week. Or at least I'm definitely attempting to try and get back to that. 
So again, thanks again everybody, and like always, roll the outro because I'm out. In fear and surprise, as your eyes widen, your mouth goes dry with each battered breath. You try to scream, your mind begs to be glued to your computer screen. The killers they slash, the tapes burn and crash, the cartridge you bought will be your final haunt. The rituals of hate will seal your fate, the tears you shed will be from the fear-gripping portrait that marish your fill terrorizing hateful burning violent rage-inducing knives slashing blood splattering silent screams only time will tell if you will escape this online hell your horror-filled obsessions will come with its own regressions your pathetic screams will not be hidden in any way because your nightmares will come at any day